you like this video, make sure to visit our Vimeo page and follow us to get the latest update. So today I'm going to discuss uh, Veros the creation rule. And then I'll be, because I there's a prerequisite for storage control that we need to have yard management because we could see that integration as well between EWM and yard management. So after that, we will be discussing about the storage control. And then we will come back to advanced production integration and internal warehouse process. And then you know, which comprises of internal comprises of transfer posting, replenishment, ad hoc movements, physical inventory, and then cross topics. So this is a flow, you know, so I've just, uh, you know, swapped this uh, warehouse the creation rule with advanced production integration so that we could first cover the um, storage control, you know, we covered waves strategies, uh, we covered uh, urban strategies waves. So let me also, we briefly touched upon creation rule. So let me also explain you what this creation rule. And then tomorrow maybe we'll set up yard and then Maybe by next week, start of next week, we'll complete storage control. Okay. And start with the creation rule first. So we have seen warehouse orders till now. So warehouse orders are basically, you know, it's like uh, uh, I've just correlated warehouse order with your transfer orders. It's the header of a transfer order and task are the lines of tiers. So whereas order basically group of tasks. So one header can consist of one task or it can consist of many tasks, right? So that is uh, in a simplistic form, but you know, as a proper definition, it's, it's basically a work package. The purpose of creating a warehouse order is so that the resources, when they log into RF scanners, they use that warehouse order for execution. Another important purpose of warehouse order we have seen, the warehouse order, it is basically uh, uh, consists of, um, you know, uh, an important field called uh, queue and that controls which resource is uh, allowed to work in which queues and, you know, and if the queue is not assigned to the resource, you'll not be able to execute the task or order. So, uh, and when you go by system guided approach, all the orders belonging to those queues are proposed to the users. So queue is again, very important uh, field in a warehouse order. So resource management, we call that, you know, we, we achieve that using warehouse order creation. Um, and now what we'll do is we will understand the more technical aspect of a warehouse order creation rule where you know, in the warehouse order this field is um, is used to the main prime function of this field warehouse order creation rule in a warehouse order is to control how many tasks can be part of an order now there can be several parameters one it could be weight the other could be volume the other could be you know uh, um if it's going to a certain route then you know this is the size if it is going to production this is the size if it's going for our bond this is the size so, uh, the the right creating a right work package is important because you know when the operators they pick the order they they you know it should not have hundreds of lines it should have at least you know the number of lines it could execute in picking so there will be instances where you know, um, the, you would want the order to just consist one line as well. So in, in, in our case, specific, especially, you know, if we have a handling unit of four pumps of, and our outbound forklift, the person who picks a handling unit on forklift, he can only handle one pallet at a time. So he can only handle one pallet at a time. So, you know, we always want whenever we are picking outbound, the task should be created one task per one task per um, order okay but let's say you know we don't have the restriction we may have a you know a size requirement like three 
three tasks per order or three pallets per you know resource we can execute so we'll we'll make sure the system creates three tasks in an order so if the requirement is for 10 pallets system will create three 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 and one so we haven't seen physical inventory items task also consists of physical inventory items so physical inventory basically it doesn't you know um so it, it it is a task only but you know we call that as item so in physical inventory we count uh, you know it's not a execution task it's a count item in a warehouse order so it looks like that when you see a warehouse order for physical inventory it looks like tasks but you know the content we call that as physical inventory items because it's not a movement or a any execution we could perform it's the activity is different counting okay so we call it as a different way uh, the task is called as physical inventory item yeah so so basically when we look at a warehouse order i'll just show you a warehouse order creation rule configuration there are two things here which we should be aware of one what is the uh, what are the parameters based on which a creation rule is created and how to determine a creation rule okay so for, first is definition there there is determination so uh, there are two configuration you know for this each of these one okay where we are going to uh, look at the creation rule where it is created the other configuration where it is determined so we are going to create our own creation rule determine it and then we are going to see that in our order and we'll see how it is going to impact the overall picking okay so basically what we'll try to achieve in terms of uh, testing the creation rule we'll say our creation rule capacity um, has testing we'll say you know the capacity is to handle let's say three pallets okay so when we are going to create let's say seven deliveries okay we'll create deliveries let's say seven okay so seven deliveries will be assigned to let's say one wave okay seven deliveries and then we will assign them to one wave so so basically what we'll try to achieve is you know uh, try to simulate a production scenario so in a production you may have you know many deliveries at the same time we just try to recollect what we discussed in uh wave management is grouping of deliveries for you know creation of task okay so now when it is assigned to one wave when the wave tries to create a task there will be seven tasks created for seven deliveries but there will be three orders created okay with three items w2 with three items three items i mean three tasks yeah Row three with one task. Okay, so basically, you know, we'll see that how our creation rule comes up into an, into these orders. Okay, we'll see that field coming up into these orders because um, okay, so these orders are basically um, you know work package. So now you know these orders can be individually picked up. Okay, so then you know whereas the creation rule determination depends on the activity area okay so if we are trying to execute you know this scenario let's say that wave one is only for said system is going to create three orders for said okay w123 so said will first execute its own order with three pallets he'll pick three pallets put in g area then he'll come back pick another three pallets put them into g area then we'll pick the third so creation rule has to is determined based on the uh, based on the activity area okay so so here another point you can think of so sid is very busy here he has a lot of orders so johan can join sid so you know there are three orders w1 w2 w3 okay so sid can when so sid and johan we both enter we take our scanners Sid picks a warehouse order one. I go into the scanner, tell system, propose me an order. System will tell me, you take order two. So, you know, when you split your work, it's the same wave, but you know, multiple people are working together. 
So, so, Rohan, so here, if my warehouse order one have three pallets, like three tasks within, within it, so I said I only can work at, uh, like, that task cannot be used by another. Uh, no, you have picked right? up this order. So yeah. your the task within your order will only be, yeah, yeah, will only yeah. be executed by you. Okay. Then, yeah, then whoever completes, uh, let's say Johan takes two and then whoever completes first will pick the third one. Okay. So activity area plays a very important role in creation rule determination. So let us see the configuration now. You can have a various order and resource assignment one to one, right? For your comment. Yes. So one one to one means one resource can only be assigned to an order. Okay. That's right. That's right. warehouse order so here you can see define creation rule for warehouse order and then define search sequence for determining the creation rule see here you can see there are so many creation rules okay so i will let's say take any one of them okay and uh, i will create and then we will change it you know as per requirement i'll just take any one of them this and come as a standard uh, within the EWM, right? Yeah, the Y ones will come as standard. Okay. I'll say O001 creation rule for our bond. Okay, let's say this is my creation rule. Okay, and just save it for now. We'll go to the detail config okay in a moment. So then we will define the creation rule. Okay. So now here, what we have to say is for a warehouse WH24, WH for activity area, what is that activity? 8004. Okay. Whenever we are doing pick outbound, we have set up from 8004. Our creation rule should be 001. Uh, here there is search sequence okay so so why there is search sequence so basically when when there is search sequence that means there will be some criteria here if that criteria is not met it will go to the second right so why need why we need criteria okay so the criteria are criteria are required for example let's take an example same area okay um Sid is speaking in the same area, okay. And if he's speaking for, you know, um, there's a customer, you know, who basically wants a special type of pallet, okay. So when Sid is speaking for a customer, that special pallet can only accommodate, let's say, two tasks, okay. So now the creation rule will be different. Okay, so generally the creation rule will be like this for all customers. Okay, three orders will be created, but there will be one special customer or okay, special customer or route where this parameter can change. Okay, I'm just giving you sizing as a parameter. There are other things as well. So let's say there is a customer where, you know, they, they don't... Uh, they want individual pallets and those pallets should be wrapped together in and packed separately. So they don't want, so what Sid has to do when that customer order comes, he has to pick that pallet, go here, somewhere here, bubble wrap it, and then go and put this here. Okay, so then in that case, the whole rule is going to change. So it's not going to be one rule for everything. There will be criteria based on which the rules will be changing. Okay, so if this, this customer comes, then we may pick 
seven orders. We'll have seven orders for each task because the handling units three and I cannot pick three handling units and go to bubble wrapping station. I'll just because with bubble wrapping station there is space to only put one pallet. Okay, I'll put the pallet here. It will be wrapped into bubble paper through a machine, and then I'll pick it and put this shoot here. Okay. So other customers they don't need that, and then you know these are basically let's say STOs where you know you don't you're not packing sending the customer whatever pallets are there you're just picking and putting them into GI zone for example. Okay. So creation you need a sequence because you know and in this we'll maintain a criteria check root one or customer type one and then go to root two customer two two this is the creation rule. Okay. So basically. In, the, in this, we give a something called as filter. Okay, we try to filter whatever is applicable and just filter out if it is. So in this case, for example, I give a filter that, you know, how will, we, how will I do a filter? What is the technical? I can say the process type is different. Here, my process type is the for standard is 2010. For this here, you know, it can be a root or it can be you know, let's say I've created another process type. 2011. Okay, for these this kind of deliveries. Okay, so now what has happened? What will happen here? System will first check in this rule. In this rule, it will have a filter that only 2010 process type. Now, in our case, if we haven't done any other config, system will not take this order because this order is only applicable for process type 2010 and if it doesn't uh, doesn't find here if this rule is not applicable then it will not assign a creation rule through config see we see one thing we have already seen and i have already you know explained this so i'll just do a quick recap in it's not that you know if you have not maintained a creation rule your configs are not going to work or oh, sorry your execution is not going to work you'll still be able to execute task okay so I mean, if you don't, this config we are doing for the first time, but if you see, we had so many various orders. Okay, they still got created. We did execute a lot of tasks on RF, forklift. So, how system determined the creation rule? We did not do any config. System picked up standard creation rule. Okay, but let's say uh, you don't even have standard, you know, there is no config at all of creation rule. So, or you know the standard one also system couldn't determine there is a filter so system is going to internally assign a creation rule okay and you will see like um like this bf default so here vipal was not applicable so system picked up def default okay so wherever there is no configuration you will see a def as a default that means system has done internal so now we need you know some or the other you know uh, splitting right so wherever you know system couldn't find a creation rule there's no config or you haven't maintained anything system by default will take a default creation rule and make its own you know uh, splitting where it will be you know one task per order most of the times okay so system does this default creation rule and the order has to be always created even if you don't give a rule it has to be created system by default will create one task per order or something like that okay so here in determination we need to understand here um, if we the criteria or the filter that we give if the filter is applicable this rule will be picked up if the filter is not applicable we'll pick the next one next one if any one of those are not applicable it will just simply come out and assign a default one okay def so in our case if we give some filter let's say process type 2010 and if you are creating task of 2011 uh, that filter will be applied and you know this rule will not be assigned to that one uh, then system will create a task for 2011 with rule uh, with the internal creation rule def Logan, uh, any of that internal creation tool is uh, configured in the system, right? In uh, best practice. No, it's not configured. DEF is not configured. It's through program. Oh, through program. Oh, yeah. so there is no DEF here. You will not see any DEF. Mm. That's internally. So. Oh, internal, the coding level, they have. Uh, okay. okay, fine. Yeah. We have to standard FCB program it is done. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So, okay. so it's talking about the filters. Okay. So here we can create those filters, you know, which orders are applicable. Okay. So if I say, I'll take this filter, any filter and create, or I'll create my own filters here. Yeah? And say warehouse is WH34. Filter zero one, yeah. Then I can give process type as my filter, yeah. That same name, whatever you know, I want to put. So I'll say here, you know, like um, uh, what picking. what what you try to do? How you try to put your nomenclature? Like, uh, you do it a process type. You make it. See, if you know, my so filter is a, if my filter is process type. So here I'm going to say process type. Then I'll give it as a process type. Generally, okay. if it is a, it is a, uh, you know, based on root, yeah. I'll give a root name. You know, if it's based on, you know, wave category. If you remember, we created wave category in in waves. We said we are going to use in wave. So only waves that has that wave category will be considered as one group. So that is another filter. Yeah. So if I'm going to use everything for picking, there's no all picks. I'll not have a process type here. I'll say. No put away, no internal transfer, no physical inventory. And I'll say here picking. So P I C K. Okay. So I'll give different names, uh, something which helps me to understand easily. Mm, then, you know, if I say that only full palettes, no partial palettes, I'll put this restriction. So, you know, this rule will only be applied and orders will be only created for full palettes using this rule. So, if there are partial palettes, this rule will be filtered out and will go to the next rule. Okay. See, so one is... question. Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt. One question here. This virus order rule uh, and uh, that filter assignment of WPT happened in only these configurations or any other assignment would be there? Which assignment, sir? This virus process type is there, right? Virus process type uh, assignment under this virus order creation rule filter. Mm -hmm. so only this uh, uh, node uh, uh, system uh, determine virus process type or any other no uh, come on uh, process type uh, is determined through this config how did we determine process type for outbound no no, no i'm not talking about the virus uh, process type determination i'm talking about the virus order rule filter against the uh, virus process type we will come to that we are creating a filter then we'll determine oh okay okay it is creating at the moment. Yeah, only this point we 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 have the combination, right? Not other. Yes, yeah, so at a filter. See, yeah, we don't need to worry. We'll cover those wherever it is applicable. But at this point, we are discussing the filter creation. We are putting the criteria based on which filters are applied. We then fine, we assign this filter to a process type. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Okay. So there are other important. Uh, um, parameters based on which a filter can be considered. For example, you, you say you know that this rule is only applicable if the if the task has minimum volume so and so or maximum volume so and so or filter out you know any any task which does not have you know 50 kgs okay so this rule is only applicable for you know the products that have uh, uh, minimum weight 50 kgs. Okay, or, or tasks that have maximum minimum weight 50 kgs. Apart from that, you know, just, just filter out. So if it is more than 50 kgs, we'll say one task per order. If it is less than 50 kgs, we'll say two tasks per order. Okay. Um, between two, uh, 50 to 100, we'll say two tasks per order. If it is 100 to 150, we'll say three tasks per order. Okay, so we we'll create three rules. Each of them will have different sizing. Okay. So you can use the three rules the filter will be one or one or it will be different 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 filters different first, filters, right? first rule will have filter with minimum weight 50 the other one yeah. will have minimum weight 100 third one yeah. will have you know minimum okay. uh, minimum weight uh, first one will have minimum weight maximum weight up to 50 where yeah. we'll have uh, one the other one will have 50 to 100 oh, it will have uh, you know, a two task will give a rule with 
two tasks and then two tasks per order, then 100 to 153 tasks per order. And this, what is there is this the drop down or the filter type, please. So I can see the warehouse task. Oh, yeah. This is one option as physical inventory. Okay. So we create a filter, then we assign the filter. Okay, so one by one, we'll do this config and we'll come and assign to a creation rule. So creation rule is WH34. Come to a creation rule, we assign a filter. It's 2010. Okay. Now the next config is important config there are many config we'll move on to the next one first uh, the one uh, which controls the sizing which is the limit many times he logged in and he forget <laughs> it seems so he's, he's forgotten let me see how long he's been in session slash OSN 13. S4 Chandra. Let me take him out of this. Okay. Mm. Okay, yeah. So now we'll say, you know, um, how many items do I want to have? What is the capacity, you know? Uh, how many I should have in a in our order so that capacity you see this retail you can give i'll take any one of the standard one and i'll give a capacity using that yeah so for example i take this okay and here if what i will say is um, my capacity is maximum number of issues three okay or maximum number of tasks or the you know what is the maximum number of items per order or minimum number of items per order i'll say three items per order okay so here if we say this this is um okay must the customer picking is fine wh34 and the limit is let's say mx03 something like that we do yeah maximum capacity of three okay so you can do it based on item what is the volume what is the you know limit what is the volume based on which you want to you know do a limit so if the volume is exceeded if the volume is exceeded then it will create another order okay so if the total volume is 1000 meter cube and then it will going to and your limit is 200 meter cube as an order so it is going to create five orders okay if the task size is of uh, 1000 meter cube okay. same is weight okay. you can control how many number of hus you are going to pick okay you can create number of task per hu okay so a handling unit if it has multiple products in a handling unit you will pick multiple tasks so you'll say you know maximum i should pick you know 10 tasks if a handling unit has 50 50 items i will pick maximum 10 at a time okay so, so here, Rohan, we mm -hmm. said uh, warehouse order three. So with this uh, limit, we will create a three warehouse order, right? Three uh, tasks per order. Three, three tasks per order. Okay. Okay. Three tasks per per order. Okay. Okay. Then it is okay. And not warehouse order. Three tasks per order. Three tasks per order. This and is this the... maximum weight and minimum weight we have already defined in the filter. So. Mm -hmm. so that is filter to consider that you know oh. if the filter criteria is not fetched it will go to the next rule this is limit so what is okay. your size okay. so when when you say 
you know maximum is reached it will go to the next one it will go to the next uh, order so if it if the number of items are 10 it will create 3 after 3 it will create a new order for remaining 3 3 3 1 like that it's going to create okay yeah but again that uh, maximum uh, task per order we said a 3 then maximum number of hu so one task is one hu one task is one um, one action right so here I, I will say 3 again so what will happen so when the system is determining the task when a system is creating task and you know it, it will have the same impact what it will have here in, in our yeah, case yeah. because we have we are picking full handling it. Yeah. but let's say you know you you don't want you're not worried about how many items are there i'm just picking one item right mm -hmm. you're not worried about the item so the I, one hu can have multiple items so your your filter is not at item level your filter is at hu ah, level so if your if your hu has multiple items and you don't want to go at item level to say just pick two handling it it can comprise of one hu or two hus sorry you have one item uh, or two items so this limit um, you know plays a very important role in the sizing so generally we maintain the maximum if that is reached it goes to the next one Okay. And then if we save this, we go and assign it to our relation rule. Okay, so these are the two main important config. There are some more, but these are the two main configuration we go and assign. Okay. Limit. Uh, you can one question here this point uh, this uh, this step that limit value override uh, the pack spec pack spec yeah. so where at which point we will use pack spec in our bone what is the usage of pack spec in our bone Oh, see, when we load, uh, before loading the product, uh, uh, say after picking the product, uh, we pack the material, right? Uh, for a, Based on the pallet, on, based on the pack spec, right? Mm, so, so where it is happening, the packing, is where it is happening? In the packing area, right? Yes, yes. Creation rule is for what purpose? Picking purpose. Picking purpose. Packing is yes. different. So your picking has already happened. Then you are doing packing. Did you get it? You know, the why it is not related, why this capacity is not different to your pack spec capacity, what you maintain. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. The role of pack spec in outbound, again, I'll try to, you know, summarize. We use it for determining the HU into which uh, the handling unit into which we are going to pick the parts. We are going to use pack spec for. Uh, proposing the warehouse, proposing a hand, proposing a packaging material for our picking. So when we go for picking, Packspec will tell us this is a product. Pick it into this palette. You know this is the required palette. So the proposal of packaging material is one, you know, benefit of um, Packspec. The other benefit of Packspec is you can uh, in in a packing area you do a automatic packing based on the Packspec. And okay. That is the palletization. Okay, but this point uh, system uh, decide the capacity of the pack uh, the number order. of the thing. Yeah, okay, order based on the order. Got it, got it. So your tasks will be created. So if you if you have if you're using pack spec for palletization, so for example, like in WM, you have a palletization quantity of ten. So if a outbound delivery quantity is of hundred, it creates task of 10, 10, 10. Right, same way yeah. here, pack spec we maintain palletization value. Tasks will be created 10, but this will control 10, three tasks into an order. It is nothing to do with the okay. Got, got your point, got your point. Yeah, so that split up, split up the task, right? For example, one task, <laughs> uh, the one order containing three, 
within the task system uh -huh. and determine this this particular okay so it's basically that right? after task is created creation rule comes up but before task okay. creation whatever strategies you know whatever picking strategies we have set up if you have set up pack spec whatever you know other things you have done mm -hmm. and there is no it doesn't conflict with any other functionality that we have discussed it's independent for each order it happens got it got it thanks thanks sir robert so the next one next important field since we we are talking about pack spec is the packing profile so this packing profile controls which handling unit is uh, proposed for the picking so now what happens is i mean depending on the customer you may you may or may not use this so the customer says for for example you know um, i'm picking if it is for customers if it is for a certain type of customers you know uh, propose me a special palette to pick those parts if it's a normal customer just propose me the normal standard palette okay so for some customers they have special steel carriages or special pallets into which you pick you know the rtps you know customers rtps you have in stock you pick on those rtps so you take those you have special handling units so special packaging material should be proposed to you so there you know you can create a packing profile and this packing profile using this packing profile system will find out a pack spec and then system will take a packaging material from the pack spec and propose in you that you should pick into this order okay so while we execute a picking task we'll, i'll show you where the uh, handling unit is where the, where the packaging material is proposed and what happens with this pack spec uh, with this packing profile what is the uh, what is the um, ultimate outcome so for now i'll not maintain this we'll, we'll execute without this and during execution we'll see you know we'll give the packaging material manually but uh, you will see you know um, when we maintain this how we can automate the packaging material proposal okay so this pack profile must go in the packaging specification or like when we yeah. were doing okay. yeah so if the pack packaging profile is maintained then it will go and check for a pack spec there is a field in pack spec for packaging profile So if you want this to be applied, then we have a packing profile as a field. So here you can see where sort of the creation packaging profile. So the, when the creation rule is there, for this rule, just let's park that rule. When this packaging profile is maintained, We'll give a packaging product here. Okay, we'll say Euro Palette should be proposed, for example, and we'll put the packaging profile here. So, system during warehouse order creation will look at this packaging profile, take this packaging material, and propose it onto the scanner or onto the uh, onto the desktop wherever you're confirming load. Okay, so this is how you know the packaging profile works but let's see the manual way first then only we'll be able to understand what this uh, profile does how where we we haven't seen a picking uh, with uh, we haven't seen a picking with um, pick handling unit where we pick onto a palette we have already we only picked full palettes in our bond so we'll do a partial palette one one uh, pick handling unit picking and then we'll i'll explain you you know why 
packaging material has to be proposed in our scenario we all we are already packing into a pallet and storing into pallet and picking full pallets but what happens you know what is the scenario where you go and take a trolley so this is like your trolley which packaging material should be used for your trolley you create a trolley go to the trolley you pick the items on your trolley take the trolley to packing area then they will pack it so in that case what what should be a packaging material for the trolley so that comes through this pack spec so in case of if you're picking multiple items we use this pack spec and we, uh, pack and uh, the profile packaging profile so other thing that is used is sorting okay see in standard you will not see the sorting but you know things will become interesting when you are working for a high volume and a, a customer which has implemented EWM to detail extent there all these things will come up okay for example these are next level optimizations for example you know you have been asked to pick 10 tasks now now the customer may say okay um the cust in this example for example uh, you know we are picking three orders okay um now the customer may say that in this warehouse order one there are three tasks okay so basically basically there are three tasks for example let me so now so there are um, you know deliveries here okay so now the delivery i'll just take a very big basic uh, you know a parameter which is priority okay delivery priority let's say these are our deliveries okay i'll just take 1000 2000 3000 4000 5000 6000 Let's say we have seven deliveries. Okay, now these deliveries, when system is going to create, okay, let's say there is just one task per delivery. Okay, so there is task one, here yeah, there is task two created. Here task three is created, here task four is created, here task five is created, task six is created, task seven is created. Okay. Now here, when the system tries to create a warehouse order, we would say okay, warehouse order one will contain tasks one, two, and three. Okay. This is something which every customer which very basic or medium customer would say okay that's fine with me but there will be some customers who will come up and say hey hold on hold on seven deliveries i want out of the seven deliveries this and this are high priority for example i'm just taking priority as a field this is high priority priority one Okay, I don't want, I want the first or the thing should be sorted before you create the order. The task should be sorted. So sort based on priority. So you're sorting. So what system will do before creating order, it will sort. So it will be task one first, task four first, task six then, task one, Task two, task three, and then task seven. And then the orders will be created like this. So you can, you know, um, basically what sorting does, you will, based on different parameters, you can sort. Miss something here. The task. And that sorting will control which orders the order consists of which first. So it's not only, you know, it will go in numerical, you know, it, you can also influence which task goes into which order. Which one I missed? Four, six, five. Five. Five, yeah. Five, yeah. So this priority 
uh, this will be coming from the delivery right mm -hmm. i'm just saying priority is an example you ah, can example. you can yeah, take yeah. yeah you can take any example you say let's say you know i take process type so let's say you know sorted based on process type so all process type should be grouped together mm -hmm. or i'll say sorted based on um, the delivery time so whichever whichever has a delivery time early should be part of the first order so just this is a very basic example in a seven tasks one order there will be like in a, in a high volume whereas you there'll be 100 200 when up to 500 tasks will be there you know uh, not in an order but in a way there'll be 500 tasks and then you know order you know which one comes into the first order yeah you have to you have to sort that you know you what should come first who so that this also plays a very important role gi date for example very common they'll say you know why you're picking in uat he'll highlight hey you're picking item seven order three it's gone later in the queue but our task seven is for delivery seven thousand it is it is the goods issue date is prior to thousand why don't you pick that first so most of the small warehouses will be okay with this but there'll be some warehouses based on your design they may ask you to do for the level of optimization or for the level of sorting okay so this sorting controls you know how the tasks are sorted within a within a warehouse order okay and then see there if you try to see this you know what is the next level it, it will go in more detail see now warehouse order one has so this is sorting of task sorting of tasks for the purpose of order creation now within an order also you can do sorting so within an order you can say why order four is coming first why why task four is coming first why not task six why not task one so that also you can control okay. so so this is you know this is in that's what is called as you know warehouse orders so one sorting there are two sorting there one which controls uh, the task the other which controls the sorting within the task you will see there are different fields based on which you can do the sorting as of now there are nothing but you can go and see you know different standard fields based on which you can do the sorting See, these are the fields. These are the standard fields. So you can do it based on pick path from where the parts are being picked. You can do it based on so many types, bin, handling unit, stock type, there are many, many, many things which you can, there are 42 fields you can use for sorting based on time, wave category, wave items, waves, weight, unit, volume, task number, whatever. Okay. So this is path sequence. Path sequence means sorting is based on path sequence. Path sequence means you're sorting based on your path. You know, sort the task. So task is four six one. So if which if four is here, four six one, I start my picking from here to here. So if four is here, okay, four is here, task four item is here. Task six item is here and task one. Oh God. Task one item is here. So I'm I my generally pick path is it will check what is your pick path. My pick path is like this. This, then I pick this, then I pick this, then I come here. So six will be task six will be coming on the scanner first, then task four, and then task one. Okay. So the pick path based on your path sequence, you're sorting the task within an order. So that is also possible. Yeah. So, so just quick one here on mm -hmm. this one, Rowan. We did the bin sorting uh, uh, manual external bin sorting, right? Where we have uploaded the bin sorting. Now, mm -hmm. as per the rule system, will assign the sorting rule what I have uploaded, right in the bin master, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. for the picking. Now, 
here how does uh, now how does this filter is influencing because that should take the priority right how my picking yeah that is only that. that it's considering that only so it is considering your okay. path yeah. sequence so how yeah, how system knows what is a path sequence so how system knows this is uh, this has this has number 6 mm -hmm. this has number 9 this is number 16. So it is sorting based on this bin sort number. Bin sort number, okay. The sorting That's is done okay. based on the sort number in the bin master. So that field is used for sorting. Okay. okay. Mm, all right. So let's do a quick test and we'll try to do a, uh, you know, uh, picking on a pallet. We call that as, you know, picking on a pick handling unit. So uh, we have picked full pallets. Now we are picking going to pick multiple pallets onto our trolley. So we'll see how to do that. We'll also test whether our creation rule is determined or not. And then we'll see uh, whether the grouping is happening as per the creation rule or not. Okay. So let me create seven deliveries real quick. Um, Twenty-five. Notas. Okay, this was the batch managed item. Okay, let me get one quantity. I need seven. Yes, yeah? so it is for the same customer, but yeah, you can have for different customer. I'm not uh, changing the date. Let it uh, pick good issue date. It should be on 2nd of December. Yeah, so that they all are assigned to the same wave. So first delivery. Seven deliveries I'm going to create. Second delivery. Third. Sixth, sixth, seven. So seven deliveries are created. Nine, five, four. Okay, I don't will not have many deliveries in this way also. I'll just go and search it as blank. Let me directly go to the monitor, look at the wave. Okay, all right, so let me sort it in a descending order. Okay, so create seven delivery, let me see the wave for the one of them and if i go to that way and there is only one in this and if you remember i think we have maintained some criteria the limit for wave yeah Mm, so I think we have set up limit of something, you know, limit is number of items is two. We have set up a limit of two during our testing. So what I'll do is I'll merge this waves actually, you know, so that two, so just create a two, four, six, seven, yeah. So let me merge them here. Yeah? Let me see if I can merge them from here. Yeah, now I got all my deliveries into one way. 
Okay, so manually I've overwritten the wave template capacity number of items are seven. <laughs> it is showing minus. That's okay. Uh, so now this is what. So now this is how you know. Uh, that we would get created with multiple items now we will see when we create an order okay because the three orders are created with the creation rule that is the first thing we need to test i'll click on release seven tasks created let's go and see how many orders three orders created okay i will go into the order details you can see the creation rule is 0001 and it created three, three, one. Okay. Now, whenever one tip I'll give you, if your behavior doesn't work, okay, uh, if your creation rule is not getting determined or your capacities are not coming up and you're really trying, you've used sorting, you've used all kinds of things and you, you're not sure whether, and it's not giving you the desired result. At several places, you know, you have this uh, where sort of creation rule log. If you go here, you can say display where sort of log. It will show you whatever, you know, See, it is so important SAP has done it in so many details. You can read this log. Item filter was passed, okay? And then there was sorting rule. There was no sorting rule. Then limit was seven. Everything you can read here and you can see capacity, maximum weight was checked, maximum volume was checked. Every check that is happening, you can see here and how the order are So you can read and try and understand where it is going wrong for you, okay? So, this is also important and okay now let's confirm this order so let's say now this is the order i'm supposed to pick three pumps okay now i'm going to pick on a pick handling so this time i'm not picked a this time i've not picked a full palette i'm not picking a full palette of four pieces i'm picking three palettes which i'll pick from one uh, from one or more handling units okay so i've taken a trolley my, my palette size is four so I don't, I'm not picking a full pallet. So where will I take three pumps? I'll have to take some trolley with me, right? So I'll go to outbound, picking, picking by warehouse order for now. And I'll say here, so as soon as I go in this, this is where I give which, what packaging material I'm giving. This is what the packaging profile controls. So it will look at uh, the pack spec for the material and it will propose you which is appropriate packaging material based on route, customer or whatever. So let's say, you know, here the appropriate packaging material is Euro palette. And you create a Euro palette is there or not, let's see. Um, I think this material it's not taking. Let me try this one. Let me pick something from drop down no list of packaging. With the packaging material, let's slip into our stock. So, in this, uh, the packaging material, this is something which operator need to scan and in the scanner. For yeah. This, uh, so, profile. yeah, it will be proposed automatically through packaging profile. Or if he, if the user is deciding, what if you know the user is going to decide which um, which one to use, then the user is going to scan that packaging material. So wherever he's going to pick a trolley, he's going to have a barcode there for the packaging material of a trolley. He's going to scan that. Euro palette is here, why it is not being picked over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Euro palette. It 
which type of packaging will you get as F9? Somebody has seen this material. It's not an H2 type proof. Okay. Okay. In the sense that we have, you know, maintained some restrictions. So now this resource is not allowed to work on Y001 type of pallets. That's why it's not allowing. I have I maintained this restriction. I didn't remove it, it seems. Let me take another resource. Let me check which resource doesn't have any restriction. I think FT9. Another resource. I think a forklift 8. Let me pick 8. Okay. So now it has created a handling unit for the trolley, for that empty pallet that we have picked. So the previous resources were not allowed because if you remember the initial session, we set up some criteria, you know, which resource can handle uh, what kind of pallet here. Yeah? So one, two, three had limitation that they can't work with Euro pallet, so it's not, it was not allowing me, so I picked up forklift eight. Okay, so, so here you can see I'm going to the next screen and system is telling me to go to this bin pick one pump onto this trolley, onto this handling unit. So I'm going to this pin. Now it's telling me there are multiple handling units, which hand, from which handling unit you're going to pick. So physically a user can see, but now here I'll try to look here into the monitor. And let's say this is handling unit is closer to me. This handling unit 219 is closer to me. I'll pick from 219. I'll pick, I've picked one pump from there. The next one also from there. One minute, even second, number one. So yeah. the source SU you are picking over there, and then what is this destination SU? This is the pick handling unit, a trolley. I'm picking one one pieces. I'm picking pieces from here. If you see two and nine, I'm taking stuff from two and nine oh. onto the trolley. Now it is left with two. So I'm picking pallet from that full pallet. I'm picking removing pumps and putting them onto this trolley that I've created, trolley handling on it. Okay, the part quantity. Yes. So I picked it. I picked all of these into the pallet. Now, in this picking, I think this picking was not an efficient way to do a pick. A supervisor will come and complain me, I don't like this pick. Why? Can anyone think of why it was not a good pick, uh, efficient or optimized pick? Or what, what can a custom, what can a supervisor think of, you know, how we can further, you know, improve our picking process? or reduce the time for picking. So see, if you observe the previous screen, I was picking same product into the same bin three times. So I was scanning the same bin, same handling unit, same quantity, three times I took picking. So a customer can come and tell me, hey, Johan, what is this? Why I'm scanning six times? I can scan the bin. Why are you giving me three tasks of one, one, one? You show me directly three quantity. And then you show me three quantity, some of the quantity based on the bin and the product. 
and then in one go i can go i'll go like scan the source at you scan the bin quantity three scan the source at you scan the destination when it's done so that is there is a uh, config there is that's called as combined picking where you can configure that you know it tries to combine your tasks together so that you know you don't have to do multiple scans for the similar picks So now here I have picked up this palette and you can see this palette. That we have just picked. And this is a new palette which has been generated, right? Yeah, that's correct. So this is a palette with where we have picked multiple deliveries. Now we can go to a packing station where we can, you know, split the pallets based on individual split the quantity from a trolley into individual customer specific handling unit so in this handling unit there are stock for three deliveries okay so so in hand so it is possible to have stock for three uh, stock of uh, a handling unit can have stock for multiple deliveries and how do you recognize that there is a flag here at handling unit level that is called as cross delivery HU. So if you do goods issue of this, be very careful when you are goods issuing cross delivery because when you goods issue this, all three deliveries will be goods issued. Okay, so there will be instances right where you will be picking for the same customer, same route, and you will you will goods issue the pallet and all the stock in that pallet will go away. But here the stock consists of multiple deliveries. So if I goods issue. All three deliveries will be goods issued. So, uh, so Ron, this, uh, so we, when we were doing the picking, it has created the three handling unit. Okay, no, it is the same handling unit number, right? Same handling unit. We have picked three uh, deliveries into. It. Yeah, and now, in if we go in the delivery, uh, what will be there in the pack? So the three delivery will have will have the same handling unit. Same number. handling. Let's go. That's called as cross delivery handling unit. And when I have goods issued the cross delivery handling unit, it has goods issued all three deliveries. But a customer will receive a three handling unit number. See, this customer will, will receive a. No, this I'm trying to show you. You know, if it, these are three different customers, you'll obviously pack them. But if the mm -hmm. same handling, there are three deliveries for the same customer, then you may. You may want, or you're going to a plant, you know, it's going to another plant of yours where you have picked multiple items. So, and now you have grouped them into one handling unit. So, if it says the ship to party is same, or the, you know, then you can pack it into one handling unit and you can goods issue the handling unit. So, you are again, you are making full use of your handling unit. You're, you're not restricting your handling unit to a delivery. So I'm just trying to show you this is also possible where you can pick multiple deliveries into a handling unit and you can goods issue the handling unit. And what I also observed when you were doing the picking, system was proposing the destination handling unit, right? Mm -hmm. System was no. Yes. I yes. want to now I want to suppose I want to create a new handling unit number for each of my pick, just in giving. So how do how does system will know? That I have to create a new handling unit for a pick. How will system know? You, you, on the RF scanner, you know, when you enter the, uh, on the RF UI, when you enter the order number, mm -hmm. right? Where I was, uh, I have an order. Order number. And then there was a source and there was a destination, right? Now the destination was proposing this uh, new, mm -hmm. uh, the destination, yeah, if you can do that, yeah. Into the Euro palette over there, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, now this this is a, this, now destination at you was already proposed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, I want to I want to have a for example, I want to have a new handling unit for each of my pick, the destination at you, or another way, I want to have my source handling unit as a my destination handling unit number. So is there a standard way? Source, you cannot pick source as destination. Okay. 
if you want okay. to use source and destination source and destination don't create a pick handling okay okay so if you want to use source as your destination see mm. source and destination will only come so say when your pallet quantity is equal to your pick quantity mm. so if i pick a pallet of four then source will come as destination correct so you can also pick without handling unit you can just pick three here i'm putting a destination at you if i don't pick a destination if i don't enter a destination at you you can see i'm just picking three piece not on twin at you Yes, 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 yes. So what, yeah. what you have done over here? Can, can you show me how, no. I've just said dead next. I'm no, no. Which option you have selected uh, on the RSA? Next, one more. F4 next. No, no. One step back, please. One step back, back in the initial screen. Yeah, well, yes. So here is what you have done. Picking by W. Oh, I've entered my warehouse order. Hmm, okay. So you can just go here and pick mm. without handling unit. So if the quantity is four, you're mm. picking a handling unit, that mm. entire handling unit will be passed as destination. Mm -hmm. You might have observed that in a previous scenarios where we are picking yes, full yes, pallets, yes. the same source yeah. was getting passed. Now we are creating a pick handling unit and then we are picking parts onto that pick handling unit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, got it. Got it. So part, part picking you are doing basically from the different, yeah. different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yo, then, uh, could you please uh, go, Go back into screen uh, that main screen. Mm -hmm. Back, go back once. Okay, here, picking by warehouse order, right? That fourth option. Yeah. This what is that picking by warehouse rule? Picking by WR. Picking by WR. Picking by warehouse request is pressing picking by delivery number. Oh, delivery number, starting with delivery number, okay. okay. Yeah. You got one more question here. See, actually, mm -hmm. hey, see, when uh, we discussed later to this uh, bin sorting in most data level, mm -hmm. see, see uh, in automatic uh, bin sorting uh, 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 settings is there, right, in most data level. Mm -hmm. See, for example, one scenario, uh, we configured this uh, automatic bin sorting uh, in the particular uh, uh, business uh, process. See, uh, the, the similar kind of uh, business transactions we maintain in uh, here, uh, warehouse order sorting. Uh, that how system will work? There is no warehouse order sorting. Where, where did you see warehouse order sorting? You, you just you showed this uh, order sortings, right? That is sorting profile. You know what sorting profile? How? Okay. How that sorting works? You know how the tasks are sorted within an order. Okay, okay, okay. So it is it is sorted based on the fields that you have given. Okay, okay. Based on path, big path, or based on some route, or based on customer. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is no physical uh, uh, mm. point, right? This is only order. Uh, okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay, a little confused actually between this uh, uh, bin sorting and this uh, order sorting. Okay, fine. But See, order sorting is sorting within an order. So okay. Just think, take this example. Like mm -hmm. 461 in an order, there are three tasks. 461, you're clear sorting within an order or you, you're talking about sorting of task, total task? Sorting of total task, uh, Yogan. So there are seven tasks created and then uh -huh. you, you sort them based on, for example, so you give the field that the sorting should be based on pick path. So it will sort, you know, whichever is on your, on the picking path first, that will be created uh -huh. in order one. Then the later ones will be created in order two. Then third one, order three will have the remaining one. So this okay. task, it is sort. I have given an example. This is sorted based on priority. Now, if you go into the creation rule, and you maintain your own field, we saw right. You, there were so many fields in the creation rule. <laughs> so you maintain your own field. You maintain a field of pick path or path sequence. Then okay. it will sort based on from where it has to be picked. 
okay see uh, you have to uh, assign the sort rule you have to assign uh -huh. the sort rule pick path to uh -huh. your sort of creation rule so let's say if we have to do that for our in our case for our warehouse do the computation uh -huh. maybe you can test it just do this me You have to do an inbound sorting, not a task. Again, not that. So do it as pick path, yeah? That's it. Is it clear now? Ah, yes, uh, Yogan. But this inbound sorting based on the bin sorting, right? You know, must based be on bin sorting, yeah. The field is bin sorting. Uh -huh. Inborn sorting is the task sorting, and whereas order sorting is sorting within an order. So this okay, is got it. Actually, this uh, so that whereas order sorting is designed the moment of uh, the process, but mm -hmm. bin sorting uh, only for uh, the physical moment, right? Mm -hmm. From yeah. bin to bin. Yeah. Oh, got it. Got sorry, it. Sorry, sorry, don't miss it. Can you show me one more time on the system? What what was it? Inbound sorting all the tasks that are sorted before they are assigned to an order, and after they are assigned to an order, the sorting of task within an order. Okay, so inbound is before. Hmm. Inbound is when the task, like the priority example, you okay. want the priority ones to yeah, first. Yeah, that yeah. is your, this is your inbound sorting, yeah. and then. Four six one within an order, you you say I want one first, yeah. then four, then six. That is based on your sort sequence. That is your whereas order sorting. This is your the this task and that is the order within the order. Yeah. 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 Okay. So priority is my is my inbound sorting and uh, pick path is my W sorting. In this case, okay. Then thing now we are clear. Uh, it's clear. Now. Actually, I got confused uh, this between uh, this. Uh, so, but both this are yeah. okay. So same thing for the inbound as well we have to do right. Uh, uh, so this is we have done for the outbound. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you can do it for inbound as well, but. Frankly speaking, you know, inbound it is not required because it's always one yeah, handling yeah, unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just was... clear off the inbound area as soon as possible. So, yeah, yeah. generally we don't do that. So, uh, you want this warehouse order creation uh, rule uh, not applicable for inbound, right? No, no, Only it's outbound. applicable for inbound, but you will not see such scenarios like okay. complexity that we have in outbound. You don't get that much complexity in inbound. That's there. Everything is applicable. So, uh, but, uh, you uh, may when... have you have may have done it. Uh, in the transfer order rule, uh, creation rule, okay? Just when we say the consolidation group, what does it mean? We'll, we'll come to consolidation. I mean, okay, we'll basically that is, integration. That is coming yeah. under production integration. Production, production integration and, and... And pick path. When we say pick path is pick, the one... Sorting based on the sort rule. So when we were doing it, so this is coming under the node of the sorting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and when we said, uh, what is it? A uh, distributive put away. What does this mean? Distributive put away. This distributive kind, put away. Yeah, this is kind of a rule, right? Let me check. I, mean, I haven't used it for quite some time. Yeah. Where is that true? Where, where are you seeing this? To be I'm, I'm just looking to the notes which I have captured for the different warehouse order creation rule. So that's why I was confused. So distributive put away because I was not able to find where is that. 
Mm-hmm. Like even the we consolidation group, too. for example, yeah. consolidation group. Where did we assign that consolidation group? How we, we didn't discuss it. itself consolidation group. No, no, I know oh. it. I did not do it. It will be the same place, right? It will be the same place where you will do the consolidation group. There you will do the distributive put up as well. No, I'm not sure where you have seen distributive put up. I haven't discussed it any time. Neither am I able to recollect what is distributive put up. <laughs> Okay. You might have read it somewhere else. Okay, pick path. Can you show me the pick path? Where the pick path we did, right? Yeah. So it was a sort rule, right? Okay. This is sort rule, mm-hmm. and this sort rule has a field. Part sequence. Can can we do that for over there, please? Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, this uh, WCR concept for inbound. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, uh, one scenario we can uh, talk uh, related to this. Uh, see, once once the product received our uh, various doors, mm-hmm. uh, we pick the product from where various doors to uh, uh, GR staging area. Within the GR mm-hmm. staging area, we uh, keep the product in uh, quality. And uh, once the quality inspection completed, then the product moves to from quality works center to deconsolidation works center. And from that from that deconsolidation work center, we uh, deconsolidate the product and slot uh, sorting the product and uh, keep the product into put away the product into the particular main storage type, type mm-hmm. the respective storage thing, right? Mm-hmm. This all coming under the layout oriented uh, process, right? Process mm-hmm. uh, storage type, right? In that case, we we we, we use this WCR uh, concept, WCR concept for virus order. Control uh, storage control we haven't discussed, so I will not comment on that. Just okay. we have discussed good receipt and put away, right? Okay. So okay. in put away, when the task is created, like picking task, okay? Okay, yeah. We will have a creation rule there also. So once you do the good receipt, if your handling okay. unit has, if your good receipt has 20 tasks, you want to create an order of 555, it will do it. We, like you have done the creation rule here you can also create a creation rule with capacity limit filters and it will create uh, those many groups oh, those many okay. orders it's possible well, capacity and limit based on the capacity and limit we can segregate the task five 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 like. yeah yeah you can so, segregate yeah. the, group the task into order got it, got it. thank you okay Okay, then I think we'll end for today. Uh, tomorrow, we will try to um, discuss about the um, uh, yard management. So why? So basically, you know, it's not that where sort of creation rule has ended. Same way, you know, waves, we created wave, we discussed wave, we did execute them today. So same way creation rule, you know, it's not ending. We will use that in, in storage control. We'll still use that in internal process. We'll use that in cross topics. So these are, you know, these topics are used, going to be used across scenarios. So we'll come back again to creation rule. We'll do recaps wherever required. I can understand it's, it's pretty much technical to uh, yeah. First instance. Yeah, actually, this topic yeah. is very, very important topic. Actually, see the entry point of view, many questions are raised in WCR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. the more you practice, the more confidence you'll get. Yeah. So practice is key in creation mode. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, let us, you know, do a very basic yard management. The reason we are doing yard management because we have to do loading and unloading and storage control. Mm-hmm. So we'll set up a yard and we will then you know that will set up the stage for storage control where we can do our inbounds and outbound into several intermediate steps okay mm-hmm. okay then uh, we'll end for today we'll catch up again tomorrow then bye okay fine fine sir thank, thank you sure, thank you bye thank you thank you all thank you for attending the session i hope you all enjoyed it Don't forget to visit our Vimeo page and follow for more upcoming videos.